Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is going to be my review of the upcoming Summon Showcase. It's our two and a half year anniversary Gala Dragalia starring our favorite new fairy, Knot. So of course we love Mine, she's floating across the screen right now, but Knot's floating there with her and she's going to get her big form for this Gala Dragalia, so I'm very excited about that. Also on the showcase is Miriam, the original form of Mim, the form that Brunhilde in the present day takes, who comes from the past. So tomorrow's the two and a half year anniversary. I'm making this video before the two and a half year anniversary starts. And first of all, you definitely should summon on this showcase just because everybody has free tenfolds on this just by logging in. So take advantage of those. Try to wait if you can contain your excitement, try to wait so that you can take advantage of every single day of free tenfolds in case you get those adventurers before the free summons are up, then you won't have to spend any further resources and you can save them for perhaps Alberius on the next summon showcase. So everybody should summon at least because of the free tenfolds, but also having checked out Legend Ciela earlier this morning and just gotten my first solo clear on that, I have to say, I do think that Gala Knot is going to be a fantastic adventure for that battle, even just going off what we know about her now. So not even looking as much into her unique transformation or the specifics around it and its interactions with stuff like Dragon's Claws, etc. Even all of that aside, just the inherent properties of the Dispel in her kit, as well as Storm Lash and her dual resistances and being a dagger, having a good chain co-ability, she is going to be very good for Legend Ciela. So that's my opinion on the showcase. It's free summon, so you should summon for that reason. Legend Ciela came out today. It's pretty tough, and it looks like Gala Knot is going to be super relevant and super good in it. So I think that all of those things lead me to say that you should summon on this. For the longest time, Wind Adventurers have had to meet a really high threshold to warrant summoning. I was one of the people suggesting to skip for Valentine's Chelsea in part because I felt like at the time all of the difficulties of hard content where you use Wind Adventurers up to Master Ciela at that point, they were audible with lower rarity characters in general. And finally we have some really high-end water bosses in the form of uh, Legend Ciela so far. Hopefully we get some more with, uh, with the Rise of the Sinister Dominion. But as of now, Legend Ciela solo and co-op, it's hard enough that you actually have to care about and invest into your wind roster, which is pretty cool. It gives us a reason to summon. And of course, for the most precious fairy best girl that we were already planning on summoning for anyway, at least, uh, at least I can speak for myself there. So let's check out the showcase and talk about uh, the kits of these two adventurers. The showcase preview has been up for a while now, but I really just wanted to at least get a taste of Legend Ciela before I did any type of review so I could provide information on these characters in the context of that fight. Even though that's an endgame fight, I'm focused on that specifically because, as I mentioned, the other water bosses in the game, you're going to be able to clear with much lower rarity adventurers in auto setups a lot of the time with all sorts of hodgepodge of dragons and uh, you don't have to put in as much uh, work or be on the frontier of our power level to get by. And certainly in Legend Ciela, you know, there are those five to six minute clears out there right now, which is considered to be a pretty good time at this point. But uh, I think that's going to continue to go down and you'll probably see some four minute stuff with uh, with Gala Knot would be my prediction. So I think that there's flexibility. It's not, uh, it's not soul crushingly difficult, but if you saw my first clear, I had like 14 seconds left. So I think to get in the door, it is difficult to learn all the mechanics and uh, it's a high stat check with a lot of need of dispel. So that's the reason I'm focused on that is that is the content that warrants wanting new characters to actually be able to defeat. Of course, Gala not herself warrants uh, wanting to be summoned. So. You know, I, I wouldn't fault you for that either. Okay, so the details on this showcase are the usual for Gala Dragalia. You get the 6% appearance rate instead of a 4%. In this case, Miriam is going to be added to the permanent summoning pool. There's going to be a platinum showcase at the same time. It's not going to include either of these new adventurers, so be warned about that. And it's really just Gala Knot 
and uh, Miriam here. So both wind adventures, kind of weird to see what we think of as uh, Mim in a wind element, but so it goes. And just look at Kayla Knott's uh, artwork, her background characters there. It's fantastic. Grant me the strength to protect my friends. She is a wind dagger attack unit. Not awakens through her true power as a fairy, enabling her to change size at will. No longer a tiny being in need of protection, she now fights on the front lines to protect the one she loves most. Alright, so her skills are Fairy Punishment, which deals damage to the target and nearby enemies, dispels one buff from each of them, and if the combo count is 20 or higher, partially fills the Metamorphosis Gauge. So we'll talk about that shortly, but this is, uh, this is uh, a pretty good attack just for the dispel alone. Ciela in Legend Difficulty stacks dispel in increments of three stacks of 5% each. And so you need three uses of Dispel to fully counteract uh, one session of her buffing up her own defense. And timing out is one of the very real problems in it if you're newer to the fight, or if you don't have uh, some of the more powerful, more recent characters like Valentine's Chelsea, who is a really good source of Dispel in the Wind Element. So personally, when I cleared, not only did I have Dispel on my low end, but I also brought two Dispel shared skills and even then, there are times when I was not able to completely whittle down Ciela's defenses. And of course, there were other times when I had too much Dispel because she wasn't casting extra defense, but that's how much I had to do just so that I was able to sort of stay on top of things. So having Dispel on a strong character here is really good. And the other thing is when she is shapeshifted via that Metamorphosis Gauge, then this is going to also inflict Stormlash. And uh, you may not know this, but Ciela, unlike Tartarus and unlike Volk, she actually can be afflicted in the Berserk phase. And so you can cause Stormlash on her. Her inherent resistances to Stormlash are much lower than her inherent resistances to Poison. I think for Poison, it's between 80 and 85 percent, whereas for Stormlash, it's something like 20 to 25 percent. So it's much easier to Stormlash her even from the beginning of the fight than it is to poison her, which, you know, seems like a, a monetary decision on the part of side games to a certain extent. Like, poison is such a staple in the wind repertoire and to take that away when a lot of characters, that's one of the main things they do. And only three adventurers can cause Stormlash, Gayla Knott, and uh, Formal Joaquim, and Valentine's Chelsea, like, all right, we get it. There's a Stormlash Punisher worm print. If you have those characters, it's great. But it is kind of an odd design choice, obviously intended to sort of encourage and push people towards summoning. We were going to summon anyway. You didn't have to go that far. We were going to summon for Gala, not anyway. But uh, but I understand uh, the decision there. And so, yeah, Stormlash is good. You can make poison work as well. I've done Eleonora plus, uh, plus Formal Noel. But I still haven't done that in a high enough DPS where I can actually reliably clear, so I'm not quite there with that particular setup. It's partially because I'm also using uh, Templar Hope still, but uh, but anyway, we'll talk more about the fight as we go through here. Needless to say, Stormlash and Dispel are things that you want. Combo count, not the easiest to maintain in that particular fight because of some of the mechanics of Ciela disappearing with the Mist Veil or doing her choose three where she inflicts you with either fog, mist, or ice. There are periods where you can't really attack her and keep up a combo count, but daggers are inherently pretty good at building a combo from zero if necessary. And there's some nice synergy here with uh, Mine actually because of her combo time chain co ability, which right now she's the only wind element character who has that. So. A little bit of fairy magic there as well, which I kind of like. And when shapeshifted, you know, does a lot of damage, causes Stormlash. When not shapeshifted, one cool thing about it, it does 16 hits. So I think that might count toward uh, this 20 count or higher. Hopefully it does, which would mean you just need a count of uh, a count of four hits before you initiate this attack, and then you could go ahead and trigger the increase in the metamorphosis gauge. But that's probably one of the first things to test and pay attention to. But if that's counted toward it, that's great, but even if not, that's a good way of quickly building back up a combo count for flurry effects as well. Alright, so next skill here, Fairy Illusion. Deals damage to surrounding enemies, dispels one buff from each target, you love to see it, and if the combo count is 20 or higher, partially fills the Metamorphosis Gauge. 
This attack will pursue targets for the duration of the skill. That's kind of interesting, so I haven't seen the animation on this one. I know that one of Nat's attacks seemed to be her in her little spiky ball form, so I'm not sure. I think that might be the first one. But uh, the pursuit is interesting, I suppose. Ciela sometimes will dash around, or you might have to move away to avoid rebounding arrows, or you're moving away because of uh, bolts from above. So there are times when she's still targetable, but you can't stay right on top of her. So in those scenarios, maybe the pursual effect will be beneficial. It could be detrimental potentially if this starts pursuing the uh, pot of gold slime or Gosh, I forgot exactly what it's called, but the, the cute little slime, the random light element slime that's uh, seemed to cause a lot of confusion. When that first spawned in Legends Yellow for me, I thought to myself, like, did they code in the wrong enemy? Is this supposed to be a bird? And as it turns out, by defeating that slime, you get a big defense and elemental resistance boost, and that helps you avoid Ciela's wide-out, screen-wide AoE attack if you defeat the slime at the right time. So. It is actually intended to be there, but uh, either way, I think that this was probably manageable. I'm not exactly sure what it means by pursue the targets, but I would doubt very much that you're going to accidentally be popping that slime uh, instead of popping Ciela. So hopefully that won't be an issue. I kind of doubt it will be. When shapeshifted, this deals damage to surrounding enemies and deals damage to enemies in a line. And this is a 30 hit attack. So this almost reminds me more of something like... Uh, like one of the familiars or maybe like Incognito Nefaria's skill where it lingers on the battlefield. So perhaps it works that way. Reasonable skill energy costs on, uh, on both of these skills really as a dagger. So I think that these are both good. Just having two dispel skills in her kit is already somebody I want on my team for Legend Ciela. Because right now I'm having to bring those as shared skills and not having to use shared skill slots on dispel is going to open up things like, let's say, over damage, which synergizes really well with a high strength stat and when you're trying to keep up combos. So I think that that would be my natural inclination when I look at uh, Gala Not here is maybe to throw on some type of over damage shared skill onto her. For solo in particular with Legends Yella, it seems popular to use an off element uh, Grace Helper with Shapeshift Prep. I have seen a couple players doing that. I'm not a fan, I, I do think the off-element helpers should be restricted from the legend difficulty at this point since they've restricted the dragons and uh, the characters, maybe they'll restrict the shared skills next, who knows, but uh, grace is a good safety tactic for some players and so shared skills are not always going to be in use, but uh, either way, just having dispel, much like with Valentine's Chelsea, having dispel on a character with high frequency enables you to do stuff like that, like to run that Grace Helper instead of being forced to run lots of Dispel on your actual character shared skill slot. So pretty cool stuff here. I think the Dispel alone is going to make her awesome. And her co-abilities, chain co-ability, and then abilities also uh, contribute, of course. So co-ability critical rate plus 10%, just the standard dagger co-ability. Actually pretty good in the wind element if you're running any type of defensive double buff setup because it works well with feline hospitality. That is the critical damage double buff worm print from the Monster Hunter event that uh, is uh, still very good with Templar Hope and with characters like let's say Lin Yu or I even have been using it on Mona to reasonable effect. I don't know that I'll continue with that. If I end up dropping Templar Hope, I'd probably drop that type of print setup. But Critical Rate is going to help you tap into some of that uh, critical damage for sure. And then Chain Co Ability, Wind Combo equals Shapeshift Prep 5. So if a team member is attuned to Wind, fills 3% of their Dragon Gauge for every 50 hit combo, benefits your entire team. So 50 hit combos are hard to achieve. There are weapon types that are better at doing that than others. And certainly this is another case where having Mine in your team is going to synergize well here. But having said that, Mine, I don't know that Mine necessarily has super desirable properties for Legend Ciela in particular. She certainly could be used and could clear, and she could be used with, let's say, Formal Noel to actually cause poison even. And I think that she's good enough to be able to get the job done with her debuffs and, uh, and her damage and just contributing combo time to everybody. So I certainly think she's worthwhile and, and, and good, but like, 
I, I don't know that, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know that she's one of the better options yet, frankly, because it's just still so new. Like, I think that Valentine's Chelsea is solidly a, a good option, and I'm not sure about Mine. I know that she can clear. I don't know if she's particularly good. So if you include her on your team, you can probably start to get some of these 50 hit combos, depending on the weapon type. But Ciela does have those moves, as I mentioned, where she's untargetable, or she's using the fog, the water, or the ice, and the other one when she's in Mist Veil. Vale. And to an extent, it's a little hard to keep up combo when she's doing her uh, frost beam that rotates around. So there are moves where you really have to dodge and you just can't stay on top of her, or even during the glaciers. The glaciers are sort of frustrating to manage in solo depending on where they spawn because if you need to protect your AI by losing aggro on Ciela, sometimes you can't actually run that far uh, and, uh, and get them to leave her. So that can be kind of menacing if you have a lot of characters who are susceptible to bog. All this to say, this is a harder than normal fight to keep up a combo win. And even with uh, combo time on Windagito weapons and with Mine, it's still going to be kind of tricky here, so I think that the main benefit of this is frankly just from uh, from not herself. Like this 30 hit attack, 16 hit attack on these two skills, she's going to be proccing this on her own reasonably often to where this is actually going to be quite good for really, uh, for a lot of different things. For one, if you want to take advantage of Midgard Stormer Zero, who is really good against Legend Ciela, with him hitting the whole screen, that comes up in several different occasions where it can be helpful. Well, uh, that's a good way of ramping him out faster, and getting him out sooner is also relevant because you get that permanent win res reduction on the enemy, so that's also helpful to have. But even outside of that, like let's say you know you just want to. Uh, you just want to get into your special jumbo knot form faster, I think that this would count toward the metamorphosis gauge, even though it says dragon gauge here, but I suppose that remains to be seen. But even if you're just trying to get out a Gala Zephyr for DPS, if you're running Dragon Yule Zanefried, who's a pretty good backliner in the wind element, like he wants Dragon's Claws, this synergizes pretty well with a lot of different things that Wynn has going on. Uh, so I could see this being potentially quite good. And the 50 hit combo is a pretty steep barrier, but imagine in the future if we have, for, for once, like, we have a rapid fire uh, Wynn mana caster. And I don't know why I said for once, but what I'm trying to say is we don't have one right now. Um, compared to, like, in Flame, where we have uh, Gale Leonidas, or in Water we have Lapis and in Shadow we have Gala Chell. They're really good at uh, building a combo count, shredding overdrive gauges. So that could potentially end up being a really awesome teammate here for Gala Nod in the future as well. So just something to uh, to think about there. All right, and then as for abilities, dual resistances actually ends up mattering in Legend Ciela because her screen-wide AoEs can either cause bog or cause freeze. And if you're not running a character like one of the mini Galas, who often wield wind swords, or Templar Hope, well, you will feel the effects of that. You will get either bogged or frozen occasionally, and that can be sort of frustrating just to have to switch units to unfreeze your person, especially if they're a ranged character that got frozen. You have to kind of go out of your way to do it. And uh, if you get bogged, Mona was a character that was my main DPS for my first uh, Legend Clear, and him constantly getting bogged during the waves attack with the glacier, it ended up being a problem to where I actually had to manually control him myself and just protect him because he was really my only freeze res character on my team that uh, continued to suffer from that. So a dual resistance here is awesome. It's a character you can just stay on the entire match. You don't have to switch around too much. So I do appreciate that. By not switching, you're going to be able to maintain combo, which is also good, which is also helpful for Flurry Strength, uh, not final ability here. And then to explain Metamorphosis, this is basically what gives her her special big knot transformation where she, uh, it's kind of like a dragon drive or perhaps like Tiki's divine dragon form. This is the thing I'm not really sure about, how it interacts with other types of mechanics like Dragon's Claws and like uh, like uh, Shapeshift Prep, 
But I think that it's probably going to work similar to Tiki, maybe a little bit better if they decide to give Gala Knot some perks like uh, getting access to shapeshift related bonuses like Dragon's Skill, Dragon's Claw. So we'll see what that looks like exactly, but either way, I think that this is, uh, this is a good benefit. Bodes well for future Sinister Dominion, Curse of Nihility, because that, uh, that dragon form is usually well protected. Um, actually, that's for Corrosion. I'm not sure about Nihility, so I take that back. But uh, you may be sure in the comments. I'm just not sure. I, it might actually work to block Nihility also. Uh, let's see. Anything else here on T on not Tiki, on not Man, I'm thinking now about uh, did my Tiki get, uh, get Nihility or not when she was in her Divine Dragon form, and I can't remember. But anyway, I think that's pretty much all I have to say on Not. I think she's awesome. She's well suited for this new content that just released. It's one of the hardest quests that I felt we've had in quite a while. It requires a lot of investment or a particularly well suited character like Not. So if you are a Not fan, hopefully this is a nice reward and will make your life much easier in regards to Legends Yellow. Okay, so moving on to Miriam here. People become stronger when they fall in love. A woman who fought the Dyernell Empire 300 years ago at Alberius' side, though she holds a quiet disposition, she exudes warmth and care, and an unrivaled love for Alberius. She's also the model for Brunhilde's human form. Okay, so if you've played through some of Mim's and Brunhilde's stories, you'll know that this is a different person, but uh, is sort of the namesake or formsake if you will, of, uh, of Brunhilde in the present day. The image she takes is that of Miriam. And uh, this is a hard character to evaluate because she uses a new mechanic. So her first skill grants the user a strength amp. And then it says amps, strength amp, team amp max, level equals two. So to me, this is unintelligible. I don't know if a strength amp does anything by itself. Is it just a special icon strength buff? Is it just the special icon that does nothing except interact with the rest of her kit? I can't really answer that right now, unfortunately. And I think that maybe it does something. And the reason it's an amp and not just the buff is because that's going to give it Curse of Nihility immunity. But I'm not sure on that. But we are sure from reading the rest of the kit that it does interact with uh, her other moves here. So. Blast of Emotion deals damage to enemies directly ahead, draws them together, and if the user has a Team Strength Amp, restores HP to the user and nearby allies. So if you've used this first skill, then Blast of Emotion will restore HP to the user and nearby allies. A decent amount of recovery potency, kind of a medium amount. Uh, I do think that uh, with Legend Ciela, you don't necessarily have to run a healer, but if you're running a lot of freeze res characters, I feel like Lowen is very comfortable to use with the Bog Cleanse. So something to consider. Templar Hope can be a sufficient healer on his own, but uh, I haven't been able to make that work myself personally outside of uh, using some shared skills. So let's see what else we have here. It doesn't really say if it consumes the Strength Amp. This is also referring to a Team Strength Amp, whereas this grants you a Strength Amp, and then this says Team Amp. It's quite confusing. Let's read on though. Skill damage, 15% standard for wands. Wind strength amp equals user water res plus 6%. If a team member is attuned to wind, increases their water resistance by 6% when they have a team strength amp. But this just grants a strength amp, not a team strength amp. It might just be an abbreviation. Maybe this is a team strength amp. I'm not sure, but either way, apparently this could only apply to uh, Miriam herself and not apply to your rest of your teammates here because she only grants the user herself a strength amp. So I guess this doesn't apply to the rest of your team, but only applies to her. There must be something hidden going on here of like how amps work across teams that will have to be explained, I feel. Strength amp equals reflexive evasion 2 grants the user a 30% chance upon enemy attacks to activate reflexive evasion and dodge where the user has a team strength amp. Well, this is funny to me because this feels like uh, this feels like the answer that I need for the uh, the mist attack that uh, that Ciela does on Legend difficulty, the fog in four quadrants where you start off in the top right quadrant and you go uh, clockwise to avoid those. 
I basically just need better reflexes for that and better eyeballing of the center of the arena because I know what to do now, it's sort of what I tried to do in my first clear video, but I messed up, I didn't roll far enough to the left side of the arena in that video so I got hit twice. Well, I feel like I just need to brush up on my reflexes, but honestly for attacks like that or for other attacks that may otherwise trip you up, a chance to uh, to avoid getting hit is pretty nice and it doesn't say it consumes an amp here. Neither her second skill nor her ability say they consume the amp, so it doesn't really make sense to me. Like, are you just gonna use this twice in a match ever? And then you don't need to reapply amps anymore? And from then on, everything else is activated. This is kind of uh, this is kind of my point of confusion with this character of like, what does an amp do? Strength amp equals skill haste two increases the user's skill gauge fill rate by ten percent when they have a team strength amp and freeze res hundred percent. So I wouldn't be surprised if Miriam is good against Legend Ciela, but I think Gila Knot is clearly good, and I think Miriam it just comes down to what does strength what do strength amps do, and I think that. The free summons plus Gala not being clearly good are already recent enough to summon, so I won't dwell further on Miriam. You know, I think Gala not I've already discussed a lot of what makes her function so well, but just another thing to throw out there, daggers are good at shredding the overdrive gauge. They're comparable, maybe not quite on the level, but comparable to swords, I believe, in, uh, in getting rid of the overdrive gauge. So for the berserk phase of Legend Ciela, I think the Gala Nod is going to make really quick work of things, in particular when you consider that, unlike the other Agito bosses, Ciela can be afflicted. She can be both poisoned and storm lashed within her Berserk phase, with poison being much harder to pull off. So I think the Gala Nod is all that. I think she was designed for this content. She is a big incentive to summon right now because of this new hard content. Of course, remember that Legend Ciela, at the end of the day, the rewards are Primarily just cosmetic, you get a small stat increase, but really you're going for those skins and ninth and binds where it's not a huge bump on your power level. So if you're not finished with Legend Volk, if you're not finished with Legend Kai, I wouldn't stress too much right now about spending your weeklies on those and waiting until you can clear Legend Ciela in the future, perhaps with the help of Gala Knot. I've also yet to check out the fight in co-op myself, so I think that uh, for co-op it might be more accessible ultimately since some of the mechanics just create a lot of downtime in uh, solo play, like the glaciers, that in co-op everybody's a human, they know how to dodge while maintaining DPS uptime, whereas the AI you have to kind of wrangle. So it actually might be, and I'm excited for it, as a, uh, a co-op primary fight uh, since we haven't had one of those in a while. But anyway, y'all, I think that's going to do it for today. That's my take on Gala Knot the day before her release. Of course, y'all know I'm going to be summoning for her using my free summons at first, and I would love to get Miriam along the way, although my focus is, of course, on Knot. So my plan is for tomorrow, I'll post a video just to kind of celebrate the two and a half year anniversary, just log in, do my free daily tenfold, check out the event, and do a casual update like that. But otherwise, I got my Legends Yellow Weekly, so gonna be kind of coasting on that and join some of the double drop half stamina farming as well and that is pretty much it for today everyone so thank you as always for watching take care and i'll see you next time